What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Engage 8 Podcast. I'm your host, Zach, with my two co-hosts, Josh and Mike. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about a little bit of NFL stuff that's happened over the last week. And the main portion of today, we're going to be going over our March Madness brackets that uh, I believe the first four in games are going on right now, or at least one of them are. And then main slate of games starts Thursday. So I think we're all pretty excited about all the uh, quote unquote madness that's going to be happening. Yeah, that's cringe. But uh, Josh, you want to get us started with some NFL stuff? Yeah, man, I don't have a ton to talk about with the NFL. I'm going to talk about the Lions, though, just because I feel like the Lions did everything they needed to do with this free agency. I think Brad Holmes won free agency once again. He needed to go get some corners. He gets mostly back after the ACL. Trades for Carlton Davis, gets Amik Robertson, real underrated outside corner from Oakland. Or, I mean, Vegas, Jesus, I cannot stop doing that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he does that. We needed also interior D-line. He goes and gets DJ Reader, a top 10 run defender from last season. Uh, to go, go ahead and get in there with Aleem McNeil, who's also a top 10 uh, run def- run defender on the inside last season. So uh, the Lions already had a dominant uh, run defense all year last year. They're going to continue that, probably be even better this year. And then you lose Jonah Jackson for 17 mil a year to the Rams, and then you go get Kevin Zeitler, who was a pro bowler last year, has been healthier than Jonah Jackson recently, and you get him for $6 million. So I think you make you get that eleven million dollar pay cut and maybe an upgrade. We'll see. But um, he was one of the better pass blocking interior linemen last season, and he's going to be great. And then yeah, I just feel really good about what the Lions did this free agency. They really set themselves up with. I mean, they know they don't have a ton of early draft capital. They had the twenty ninth pick, but they set themselves up where they can truly go best player available, which is Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell's specialty is just not caring about what they need, just drafting whatever they want. There's many ways they can go about it. They can go re- get a receiver, go get somebody like Keon Coleman who could be an X for them. Um, I, is he from Detroit, Blub, or is he just a Michigan no, State No, he's from the South. No, okay, whatever. That would have been cool. But he loves <laughs> Michigan State, so. Yeah, okay, there's a little connection there then. Uh, but, yeah, the Lions set themselves up to go BPA, which I'm happy about. They had a ton of money to spend, spend in free agency. They did that. And now I just think they're a team that doesn't have many holes that can just go and continue to add on in the draft. Yeah, I mean, for me, what I'm going to talk about is kind of the elephant in the room. The Bears finally traded Justin Fields. I think it was the last major quarterback domino to fall throughout the NFL offseason. It it was a trade that had to be done. He just wasn't performing at the level that warranted us passing on Caleb at number one overall. The return for Justin Fields seems pretty fair, honestly. It's a sixth-round pick, uh as a base, but that's basically going to be if he's a backup and it's going to turn into a fourth round pick if he plays a certain amount of snaps or plays or whatever, but I'm going to sound really a kind of reminiscing over this, but Chicago should be 100% grateful for what he brought to the team on and off the field. He was one of the hardest workers at not only the quarterback position, but really any position in Chicago's entire history as a franchise and He honestly, he just wasn't given enough of a chance to truly succeed back in 2021 pace and Nagy traded up for him from 20 to 11 to what felt like save their jobs, or at least give them another year based on the rookie clock. And in that rookie year, he wasn't even given first team reps in camp in favor of Andy Dalton and that Monday night football game against the Steelers. It just felt like he was the guy because he drove down the field, beautiful throw down the right sideline to Allen Robinson and then rolling out left throw to Mooney in the corner of the end zone. But, and then obviously later that season, or the week before, the week after, he had that crazy run on fourth and one against San Francisco. Back in 2020, uh, one year later in 2022, we can kind of throw that year out the window because he went into the season with a wide receiver group led by Darno Mooney, Equinemius St. Brown, and Dante Pettis. If you don't know who Dante Pettis is, uh, unfortunately, he led us in wide receiver touchdowns that year. So it was just really unfortunate. But we did see Justin Fields really discover his legs. He led the league in rushing yards by a quarterback. And I think he was top five in rushing altogether. Rushes like the Dolphins won, the couple Lions ones, the Packers won, the Eagles won, which was my personal favorite because I saw it live. Yeah, I, I remember sitting in uh, Soldier Field, jumping up and down like a little girl on Christmas morning because it was just, it was, it felt like we finally had a quarterback. But then 2023 came along. We came into the year knowing that it was put up or shut up. I said it on the pod multiple times. He had an average offensive line, a true wide receiver one, and arguably a top 10 tight end in a statistically top tier defense in the back half of the year. He improved. He honestly did, but he didn't. He only took a step or two forward rather than the big long jump uh, leap that we had all hoped he would going into year three. But now here we are. He's gone. Uh, Caleb's about to walk into the best situation of a number one overall pick 
in basically NFL history, a good and balanced running back room, average or better offensive line, a wide receiver room that damn near nobody in the league can replicate in terms of talent and what should be a top 10 defense. And we still have the rest of the draft to go. And that kind of leads me to my next point. The big ad for the bears in free agency was Keenan Allen. It kind of came out of what felt like nowhere. And it only took a fourth rounder to get him. Uh, partially because of age and he's on an expiring contract and the Chargers really just had to get rid of him or else they were going to cut him. So there was a video actually posted on Twitter of every single Keenan Allen reception throughout his entire career. Uh, I have no life and no friends. So I watched the entire thing and he is exactly what a, what Caleb or really any rookie quarterback is going to need in the back third of that video that I mentioned about earlier, a good amount of his catches were just, either toasting his man in one-on-one coverage or just finding a soft spot in between zones. And that's that's exactly what Caleb or a rookie quarterback is going to need, which also reminds me that DJ Moore and Keenan are both were both top 10 graded wide receivers, according to PFF, against man coverage. And I actually saw something on a Bears podcast that I watched. One of the hosts said, and I really could not agree more with it, that DJ and Keenan Allen will be the jab and haymaker of an elite boxer. Keenan Allen is going to be your move the sticks guy, a.k.a. the jab punch. And DJ Moore is the home run ball, the chunk play guy, a.k.a. the haymaker. This offense, it's got some crazy potential, especially if Caleb gets even relatively close to his ceiling in his rookie year. And I'm really excited about it. But for now, and at least for the next five weeks, it's Tyson Bajit QB one season until April 25th in Detroit. Yeah, that trade, uh, when it happened, it did kind of shock me considering I thought... He would Justin Fields would be traded for more than a six round pick, but only a six round pick. It does shock me that a team like the Falcons, uh, even the Seahawks, the Broncos wouldn't at least try to trade a, a fifth round or a fourth round pick to at least have a quarterback in them, especially the Broncos right now saw uh, uh, their top offensive weapons right now. And it's that's a tough look. It's uh, Jared Stidham, uh, Samaj P. Ryan. And not much else after that. It's uh, I don't know what they're cooking in Denver, but they're not cooking much. Uh, but the Bears are going to officially pretty much have Caleb Williams at quarterback, which will be an upgrade. Uh, he is going to be a good quarterback, no matter what in the NFL, I think. Um, but uh, last thing I got to talk about, Jimmy Garoppolo signed with the Rams, and he gave his reasoning to why he got suspended two games for PEDs. He said um, he just messed up. Hey, way to own up to it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he, he messed up. That's what he said. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, um, if that's all we that's all we got for NFL boys, we got nothing else. All right. uh, got. Today, uh, Mike Williams actually signed with. Oh, the yeah. That's one oh, year, true. I believe yeah, yeah. 15 dollars, 15 million dollars, not just 15 dollars. They got Tyron um, Smith, too, since we last recorded. As right. Well. They did get Tyron Smith. So the Jets uh, are booking up, man. I think they're going to be real. They're, good. they're getting what they need. They're fixing protection for Rodgers and they're getting another weapon aside. And uh, Garrett Wilson. On top of that, they got lucky. Aaron Rodgers will not be Robert Kennedy's vice president. So, yeah, it, that was also big news for them. <laughs> yeah. No, the Jets, I think, are actually going to be pretty good next year. But and they got picked 10. Yeah, they could go Brock Bowers, go a receiver or another old lineman. Don't go Brock Bowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we got weeks and months to talk about football <laughs> before we got stuff that matters. So we will move on then starting our March Madness brackets here. Uh, since there's 135 games and three of us, I think that puts us what just just over 400 total games here to pick. Yeah. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to go region by region. One of us, uh, for example, I'm going to go all the way to the Sweet 16. And then I'll stop and pass it to Zach. And then he'll do the Sweet 16. Then he'll stop, pass it to Mike. So at the end, we'll be stuck with each of us will have 16 teams. And then we'll be able to go more in depth on those games rather than sitting here and giving a breakdown for UConn and Stetson. So that way we can get through it a little bit faster. (laughs) But speaking of, we'll start right with the East. UConn and Stetson. I'm taking, no, I'm kidding. I'm taking UConn. (laughs) uh, Obviously, one of the best teams in the field. FAU Northwestern. This is an interesting game. We'll see if Boo Boo is fully healthy. I'm going to go with uh, it's a tough one. I'm back and forth on this one. I'm going to go with FAU. Actually, no, I'm going to go with Northwestern. I'm going to go with Northwestern, the better defensive team. No, I'm sticking with the power five. I still think FAU is kind of riding on the making the final four last season, even though they do have the experience. uh, They were kind of overrated all season. That's part of the reason they're sitting here at eight. Uh, Moving on to San Diego State, UAB. I was close on this one as well, but I am going to go with San Diego State. They're a dominant defensive team. UAB is really, really hot. 
uh, I know when I think of UAB, I was just thinking Jelly Walker, but they don't have Jelly Walker. Um, but I, they're playing against a tough defensive team. They haven't played against a team like that all year, especially on this run. So I'm going with San Diego State. Um, Auburn, Yale, I'm taking Auburn. No questions there. BYU, Duquesne, that's another close one. I'm not high on BYU at all, but Duquesne kind of got in off a legendary run here. I think this is where their run ends against BYU. Um, moving on, Illinois against Moorhead State. I'm going with Illinois as much as I do love Moorhead State and Longwood. Uh, I'm going to go with Illinois here. Um, I'm noticing a lot. Of, I'm going to have a lot of chalk in this East bracket. I mean, we were talking about this before, Mike, but um, Washington and Drake, this is where I switch it up. I am going to go with Drake. I know it's a popular upset pick, but they are red hot. They just beat Indiana State, uh, who's not a great defensive team. They are playing against a really good defensive team in Washington State, uh, but I do think they're able to get the job done. They're a better uh, offensive team. Then Washington State, they just got to keep them off the glass. And then Iowa State, South Dakota State. Iowa State is one of my favorite teams in this field. I'm going with Iowa State. Moving on to the round of 32 here in the East, UConn Northwestern. UConn, once again, I think UConn got a really good draw, especially in this upper half of the bracket here. Uh, I'm going to take them over Northwestern. San Diego State, Auburn. This is where I'm cutting San Diego State. Auburn's a really good team. They shoot the ball well. They defend well. Uh, and they're just a lot more dynamic than San Diego State is. BYU, Illinois, continu- continuing the chalk here with Illinois. Like I said, I don't really love this BYU team. Illinois has got Terrence Shannon, who's just going to go there and get you 35 a game. Whether it's all free throws or all threes, he's going to go and get it done. Uh, And BYU just doesn't have anybody nearly dynamic as him. And then same logic that I had with Iowa State in the first round. They're one of my favorite teams in this field. Drake is a great story. They're a good team. Uh, And they definitely could pull off this upset. I'm not going to say they can't, uh, but Iowa State's great. They were underseeded, being the sixth overall seed in this tournament. Um, UConn Auburn or no, this is where we leave it. Sweet 16. Okay. You guys, right. you are upset. I'm picking up here. Yep. Okay. So for the East, uh, I'm going UConn over Stetson Northwestern over FAU, maybe a little bit of regional bias. I don't know. Uh, SDSU over UAB Auburn over Yale. Like you said, Josh, that one isn't really a question. BYU. Um, I think they're going to advance. I am going to be honest. I don't know too much about them, but I I'm just picking them. Uh, Illinois, a little bit more region bias. I'm going Drake over Washington State, and then Iowa State against South Dakota State. And then in the round of 32, got to scroll back up here. UConn over Northwestern. I'm going San Diego State over Auburn. I don't know why. I just I feel like I always pick SDSU to make it to at least the Sweet 16 every single year. Maybe it's because I like their logo or something. I don't know. And then I have Illinois over BYU, and then Iowa over Drake. Okay. Um, first round, Stetson, UConn. Really tough matchup to pick here, uh, but I am going to go with UConn. They're just the better team. They will win. FAU Northwestern, I'm a Big Ten fan. I'm a Michigan State fan. I love the Big Ten. Uh, I have in my notes on my phone every year to not trust the Big Ten, and I never listen to it. I think this is going to be the year where I finally listen to my notes app. I'm going to pick FAU. I love Northwestern. I love Boo Booey, but you just can't trust the Big Ten in the tournament. Northwestern's pace is very slow. That's usually bad. I'm going to pick FAU there. San Diego State, UAB. San Diego State made the Final Four last year. They are very good. They're experienced. I got San Diego State. Auburn, Yale. Auburn is one of the hottest teams in the country right now. I'm going to go with Auburn. BYU, Duquesne. This is a tough matchup. I wanted to pick Duquesne, but like you said, Josh, I think that was kind of a miracle run. I had talked about BYU a couple weeks ago on the pod. They were 11th in net raking at the time. I think they are a very good team. They have a lot of players averaging a lot of points. They don't really have an alpha, which might be bad, but uh, they can score from all five uh, positions. I'm going to go with BYU. Illinois, Moorhead State. I'm going to pick Illinois, but I think Moorhead State is kind of a sneaky good team. I could see them upsetting. They hold the opponents to not too many points per game. Washington State versus Drake. I love Washington State. I'm high on them. They have a very good point guard in Miles Rice and a very good power forward, but I'm going to pick Drake. Uh, they're hot, like you said, Josh. Tucker DeVries is very good. He's got his dad as a coach. Maybe we get a little a bit of a RJ Hunter, Ron Hunter, uh, March Matt, March Miracle. I love that. I, yeah. Iowa State. I saw that video today. That's like five years ago today. So Crazy. Five years. My God. Yeah. Iowa State, South Dakota State. Iowa State is on a heater right now. Um, they're going to continue it against South Dakota State. Uh, back to the top, UConn FAU. I got UConn winning pretty easily again. San Diego State, Auburn. Auburn is also one of those teams that's on a heater. We have all four of the main main power four conferences, I guess. 
in the same East region and UConn, Auburn, Illinois, and Iowa State. Uh, but I got Auburn beating San Diego State. Illinois, BYU, I think Terrence Shannon is going to have a big game. I think Illinois is going to, going to advance. And then Drake, Iowa State. I'm actually going back and forth on this game. I think there's always a two seed that kind of gets upset in this position. I think Drake gets it done. Then I know Iowa State's on a heater. They are hot, but I see Drake advancing to the Sweet 16. All right. You guys want to take these actual brackets and put them into like its own separate group? Yeah. I'm going to have a ton of different brackets. I'm sure the one that we already have, I'm not going to do the same one here. So uh, we might as well go ahead and do that. But we will move on here to the West region. North Carolina versus the Howard and Wag- versus Wagner, most likely um, going with UNC, of course. Mississippi State, MSU. I hate to do it to you, Mike, but I'm going to go with Mississippi State in this game. I just have loved this team all year round. They don't shoot the three well outside of Josh Hubbard. That is a problem for them, but they're super physical. They're going to bang down low. They're going to get rebounds. They're going to defend well. Uh, they're well coached. I just I just like Mississippi State all year. Maybe it's part of my SEC bias, but I just have liked them all year. I think they're going to move on here. Uh, moving on, St. Mary's Grand Canyon. I do love this Grand Canyon team. They're super dynamic. They can fill it up, but St. Mary's is physical. This is one of the better St. Mary's teams, I think, in a, in a minute. I know them and Gonzaga are always the best teams in the WCC, but this is one of the better St. Mary's teams in a minute. They slow it down, uh, as they always do. They defend really well. They got Everybody's willing to pass, and they're just a good team overall. I really like them in this tournament. Alabama, Charleston, two teams that shoot the hell out of the three, don't play much defense. This should be similar to the Kentucky-Alabama game, except for I think Alabama does everything that Charleston does better. Uh, Clemson, New Mexico. I'm going with New Mexico here. Uh, they won the uh, what Mountain West. I don't know why I was about to say West Coast Conference, but uh, they won the Mountain West, which was a tough league all year, even though they kind of got a little underseated. They got all their teams in. Uh, New Mexico is a dominant team. Uh, they got Richard Patino as the head coach. Clemson is kind of just benefiting from being in one of the major leagues. They're not an insane team. I think they pulled out 11 to six upset off Baylor Colgate. Colgate's always scrappy and I'm very low on this Baylor team to be honest, but they don't because they don't perform well outside of Waco, but I'm going to pick them here in the first round. Dayton, Nevada. I'm taking Nevada very easily here. Dayton is way overseeded at seven. I think they should have more been around the nine to bubble range. They got significantly overseeded all year. Uh, I've seen this team play in a, a very weak A-10 and just struggle a lot of the times. As I mean, they did get a ton of wins, of course, because they're one of the better teams in the A-10, but I think they're going to have a rude awakening when they get to the NCAA tournament here. And then Arizona, Long Beach, I got Arizona. Moving on to the second round, North Carolina, Mississippi State. I wanted to go Mississippi State because I'm really, really high on this team, but I think North Carolina does it, gets it done. A lot of experienced players, dynamic guards, uh, with Davis and Cormac Ryan. I think they get the win there. St. Mary's, Alabama. This is where my SEC bias definitely ends. I'm going with St. Mary's to beat Alabama. They're a super physical team. They're not going to play at Alabama's fast pace. Alabama is going to have to speed them up to win this game. Uh, but I think St. Mary's just going to be able to get it done. They don't. Alabama does not respond well to physicality. I think that's what St. Mary's is going to give them, and they're going to struggle in that game. New Mexico, Baylor. This is where I'm struggling between a team that I do really like, but I know is not as talented, and a team I don't like that I know is more talented. But I'm going to take Baylor. I trust Scott Drew uh, to get them to the Sweet 16 here. And then Nevada, Arizona. I love Caleb Love. I think this Arizona team could be really good. They have off nights where they look like shit, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they are a good team. I think they beat Nevada, and that would make my Sweet 16 North Carolina, St. Mary's, Baylor, Arizona. All right, so for my West region, I'm going UNC over whoever they play. They're just going to be the better team. Sorry, Mike, I'm going Mississippi State. Uh, I'm going St. Mary's over Grand Canyon. Going Bama over Charleston. I actually picked New Mexico over Clemson. I think I have uh, New Mexico going kind of far in this one. I don't know why. Uh, I have Baylor over uh, Toothpaste. I have Nevada over Dayton. Arizona over Long Beach State. And then to the next round. I have Mississippi State hitting the Sweet 16, Bama meeting them there, Baylor. No, I do not have Baylor. i reading the wrong one. New Mexico over Baylor, so I have a couple lower seeds in the Sweet 16 in this region, and then Arizona over Nevada. Okay, this region um, gets kind of wacky for me, uh, but I got North Carolina, the one seed. You, it's really hard to predict a one seed loss unless it's possibly Purdue, but you can't lose two years in a row against a one, but that's for later. 
Uh, Mississippi State versus Michigan State, the battle of the MSUs. Winner gets to keep MSU as a whole. That's what uh, the fan bases are fighting over right now. But I can't pick against Michigan State. I can't pick against Tom Izzo. He gets a lot of hate saying this team maybe shouldn't be in the tournament, but they definitely earned it. Uh, this team, last year, we saw them go into March kind of slow. They lost in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. And then they came into March... They won the first round. They beat Marquette in the second round. They played; Those were their three best games in the tournament. They lost to Kansas State, but that way they were still phenomenal. Tom Izzo knows how to get his team going in games like this, and I think he's going to do that. And it's one Big Ten team that I do trust in March, so I got Michigan State beating Mississippi State. Uh, battle of two great guards there, though, in Tyson Walker versus Josh Hubbard. St. Mary's Grand Canyon. I actually did pick Grand Canyon to win this game. I went back and forth because I like St. Mary's, but Grand Canyon has a lot of great transfers. They're very large. Uh, they have a six foot seven guard. Uh, they've won eight of their last ten. Uh, they've been very good. Alabama Charleston. I um I went with Charleston. They're like a knockoff brand of Alabama almost. And I can see Alabama going possibly cold in a game or just leaving Charleston in the game, and then they hit a couple threes and sneakily pull it out Clemson versus New Mexico I have New Mexico winning this game as well another upset they won the Mountain West they're hot going into the tournament I think that's going to continue Baylor Colgate I almost was thinking to pick Colgate because I'm not high in this Baylor team as well but I went with Baylor uh they are a good team they have a good amount of wins Dayton Nevada I went with Nevada Arizona Long Beach State I think Arizona gets that one pretty easily North Carolina Michigan State I really want to pick Michigan State to win this game. I think they have a chance. They have a chance any time that Tom Izzo is coaching them in March. But I'm going to go with North Carolina. I think uh, foreshadowing, we're setting up with the Caleb Love revenge game. Grand Canyon versus Charleston. I really like this Grand Canyon team. I think they're due. They've been in the tournament a couple years. I think, like I said, they beat St. Mary's, and I think they go to the Sweet 16 and beat Charleston. New Mexico versus Baylor. Uh, this is where I think New Mexico is very hot. And like you said, Josh Baylor struggled away from home. I'm going to go with New Mexico to also make the Sweet 16. And then Nevada, Arizona. I got Caleb Love in Arizona beating Nevada. All right, moving on then to the South region. Uh, Houston and Longwood, like I said, I'm a big fan of those schools. But I'm going with Houston uh, to win this game, of course. Nebraska A&M. This is a tough game because Nebraska is good offensively. They played in a tough big I don't want to say tough big time compared to the SEC, but they they shoot the ball well. Um, but at the end of the day, I love this AM team. They're one of the hotter teams in college basketball right now. They defend super well. They're one of the, they are one of, if not the best rebounding teams in college basketball. Um, I ooh, notification. Speaking of Kevin McCullough out for the tournament. Mm-hmm. My yeah, God. Really? I was gonna say that when we got for, to for Kansas. Wow, that's a that's a difference maker, but I'm taking AM in this game. Wisconsin JMU. I'm close on this one because JMU does everything Wisconsin does and almost does it a little bit better. But I'm gonna go with Wisconsin here. They're super hot coming out of the Big Ten tournament. Um, they're su- the Chucky Hepburn is phenomenal for them. If they can just rebound the ball, they're gonna be a decent enough team. Uh Duke Vermont, also not high on Duke, and Vermont is always a scrappy team, but I just oh, man. yeah, no, I'm going with Duke. I'm not gonna second guess myself. I'm going with Duke. Um, Texas Tech, NC State, NC State with DJ Burns and DJ Horn is just a great, great team, and they're super hot right now. Um, and DJ Burns is one of the one of the most fun players to watch in all of college hoops right now. I'm gonna go with them to beat Texas Tech, a team that played in a tough conference all year and did do pretty well, being the four. I think they were the fourth seed in the Big Twelve tournament. But I'm gonna ride the hot hand. I love this NC State game. Um, or team, and I'm going to take NC State. Kentucky, Oakland. I do think this might be a tough matchup for the Cats, actually, but I'm going to go with Kentucky, of course. Florida uh, versus Boise versus Colorado. Um, I do think Colorado wins that game, and I think Florida beats Colorado. Florida is great. They did have a bad injury uh, late in the SEC tournament, but at the end of the day, they're a team with a lot of dynamic guards, and I value dynamic guards over almost everything in this tournament. So I'm going to go with Florida. Then Marquette and uh, Western Kentucky. I'm going with Marquette, Houston, and a And M. Uh, I think this is a game that does match up pretty well for for a uh, And M. They're going to be playing a team that plays a lot like them. Houston is a better offensive team than a And M. But we've seen in games like the Iowa State game, they played a team like Iowa State, who's similar to a And M and Houston, defends really, really well, rebounds well, and they struggled to score. 
if they struggle to score against a and m a and m has enough guys where they're going to be able to put the ball in the bucket at the end of the day. Um, but I'm going to go with Houston. I think Houston's the best team in this tournament, possibly. Uh, they were one of the best teams all year. I do think they're better than Purdue and UConn, but I'm going to go with Houston over a and uh, Duke, Wisconsin, back and forth on this one. Not, I've just been really low on Duke all year. Uh, they have Mc, McCain's been great for them. Uh, Filipowski is just a whiner. Uh, and God, I mean, I, I just wish I could pick neither, but um, hey, you could go back and pick the Dukes. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. You know what? I am JMU. And then JMU to beat Duke in the second round. <laughs> so Houston JMU in the Sweet 16. NC State, Kentucky. Um, I guess I'm still picking Duke with JMU technically, but whatever. Uh, Kentucky, NC State. I think this is where the NC State meets the end of the road. They're just not going to be able to score with Kentucky. I'm not sure many teams, if any, can. Uh, I think Kentucky runs them out of the gym there. Florida, Marquette. I'm going with Marquette, even though Florida is a really good team, and I've been super high on them all year. Marquette defends well. Kolick should be back for them. I think they'll do well in this tournament. So that has me with Houston, the JMU Dukes, Kentucky, and Marquette. So for my uh, round of 64 in the South, I have Houston over Longwood, rest in peace. I have Nebraska over a and I do think they have the ability to get really hot. I think they showed it in the, in the uh, what's it called, Big Ten tournament this uh, this past weekend. I have Wisconsin over James Madison, Duke over Vermont, Texas Tech over NC State, obviously my Kentucky Wildcats over Oakland, Florida over whoever the hell they play, and Marquette over Western Kentucky. And then I have Houston over Nebraska. Like you said, Josh, I think Houston is also probably the best team in this tournament. But any given game, because it is March Madness after all. I have Wisconsin over Duke. It hurts, but I have to do it. Uh, Kentucky over Texas Tech, and then Florida over Marquette. So I, I think Florida can go pretty far if they get healthy. But for now, I'm taking them to go to the Sweet 16. Tell you what, the one dude isn't getting healthy anytime soon. Yeah, no, <laughs> sure. Tell you that much. He is. Maybe he'll say a little Micah prayer, Hemglotton. Little... I don't know how to say yeah. his name. They still have Condon, though. They're yeah. still a good team. I got for Houston Longwood, I got Houston winning easily. Obviously, they're my number one overall team so far. Uh, Nebraska, Texas A&M, again. The reminder to never trust the Big Ten in the tournament has me leaning towards Texas A&M, and I'm going to pick Texas A&M. Wisconsin, James Madison. I'm going to pick James Madison pretty easily as one of my upset picks. I watched them beat a Big Ten team earlier this year at the Big Ten team. They beat Michigan State in Michigan State. Wisconsin is better than Michigan State, but I think the James Madison team is very good. I think they had the most wins in Division One this year. Duke versus Vermont. I have Duke winning, although I'd love to see them get upset in the first round against Vermont. Texas Tech, NC State. I think Texas Tech is the better team, and I want to pick them, but the counterpoint is they don't have DJ Burns. So I think DJ Burns is going to go off, and NC State is going to get the win. Kentucky, Oakland. This is a tough game. I'm going to pick Kentucky, but Oakland is very good. Trey Townsend is very good. They have Rocket Watts from Michigan State. They're a Michigan team, but Kentucky's offense is very good. Florida versus the winner of Colorado, Boise State. Uh, if Colorado wins, I want to pick Colorado, but we don't know yet until tomorrow. I'm going to pick the winner of that game to beat Florida. Marquette versus Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky is a very good team, uh, but Marquette is getting Tyler Kolick back for the tournament. Hopefully that doesn't throw off their offense at all. I don't think it should, considering he's their best player. Back to the top, Houston, Texas a and I have Houston winning. I think their defense is just going to suffocate texas a&m and find a way again james madison dukes versus duke i have my did i yeah this is my second 12 seed making it to the sweet 16 i have james madison dukes. beating duke the dukes beating duke oh uh foreshadowing but there might be another 12 seed advancing to the sweet 16 for me um nc state versus kentucky i have kentucky winning their offense is very good they have to figure out the defense though i know there's a stat out there that's like no team that's ever finished top 10 in offensive efficiency and outside of the top 100 in defensive mm -hmm. efficiency has never made it to the Sweet 16. I think Kentucky is able to advance because they have this guy named Rob Dillingham. He's very good. And Reed Shepard. Uh, Colorado, Boise State versus Marquette. I have Marquette winning and getting to the Sweet 16. Uh, congrats, Shaka Smart. You finally did it. All right, moving on to the Midwest region. Starting out the Midwest region, I have Purdue beating the winner of Grambling and who's at Montana State. Um, 
Next here, Utah State versus TCU. I really like this Utah State team. Uh, like I said, I think some of the Mountain West teams were a little bit hated on in the from the committee, but at the end of the day, they have a chance to prove it. We'll see if they do. They haven't in previous years. Uh, Gonzaga McNeese. This McNeese team is electric, uh, and they're playing against a team that also plays no defense uh, and shoots the ball really, really well. But oh man, now I'm going. I'm going with I'm going with McNeese. I'm going with McNeese. Um, and I'm gonna double back and go another upset. I'm taking Sanford over Kansas. No McCuller. Uh, I think Kansas has really struggled even against bad teams uh in the latter half of the year here. I think they lose here instead of for 12 13. We always have something wacky like that at some point in the tournament. I figured I'd have it happen here. South Carolina, Oregon, Oregon kind of just got hot late, won the tournament. Otherwise, they would not have been in. They were one of the five bid stealers, which is the reason why we had a lot of bubble teams who didn't get in this year, South Carolina had beaten them. They're a great defensive team. They rebound the ball really well. Creighton, Akron, I have Creighton. I'm really high on this Creighton team. Texas versus CSU versus UVA winner. I'm going to take the Colorado State Virginia winner over Texas here. Texas uh, had been a pretty mid team all year long. Um, they are joining the SEC next year. So compared to what's been the best conference in college basketball for a few years now, uh, they're going to get a little bit of a break and go to the second best conference in the SEC. But I have them losing here. Uh, moving on, Tennessee St. Peter's. As much as I would love to see that Kentucky St. Peter's loss be wiped away and have the, the sworn rival of Tennessee do it instead, I'm gonna go with Tennessee. I just don't see it happening. Uh, St. Peter's is not as good this year that, as they were in that Kentucky season. Moving on here, Purdue versus Utah State. I do really like this Utah State team, but I think Purdue can break through here. Purdue is better than they were last year. They're a lot more experienced. They added Lance Jones. I think they beat. Utah State, McNeese, Samford. I'm going to go with McNeese. Um, I'm if Kansas was fully healthy, I think I would have had Kansas beating Samford and then beating McNeese. But they get a nice matchup against Samford. I think they beat them. McNeese shoots the ball really well and they defend well. Recipe for success in March. South Carolina, Creighton. As much as I love South Carolina, I'm higher on Creighton. Kalk Brenner is one of the best big men in college basketball, and he never fouls out. That's a very, very big quality in March. I don't expect him to foul out for the first time now. Um, I have them beating South Carolina, and then I have Tennessee beating the Colorado State UVA winner, who I honestly don't know who it's going to be, but I think the winner of that does beat Texas regardless. But I'm taking Tennessee over that winner. So I have Purdue, McNeese, Creighton, Tennessee. All right, for my uh, round of 64 in the Midwest, I got Purdue over whoever they play. They're just a really good team as a whole. Utah State over TCU, Gonzaga over McNeese. Kansas over Samford, but that could be in a little bit of murky waters with the injury news we got on the pod. South Carolina over Oregon, Creighton over Akron, Texas over whoever they play, and Tennessee over St. Peter's. Like you said, Josh, it would be so fun to see them lose, but it's just hard to pick against Tennessee in really any two against 15 seed game. And then in the round of 32, I got Purdue over Utah State, Kansas over Gonzaga, but Again, subject subject to change because we don't know how they're going to look with the injury. Creighton over South Carolina and then Tennessee over Texas. Okay, Purdue versus the winner of Grambling, Montana State. I have Purdue winning. Uh, we saw last year. I also had Purdue winning in the first round, and unfortunately they got kicked out by FDU. Uh, Utah State versus TCU. This is one of the tougher games for me. I've been going back and forth. Utah State has a great big man and great Osborne. But I'm going to go with TCU. I think they play in a better conference, the Big 12 over the Mountain West. Uh, I think they're more shaped to win in a tournament game here. Gonzaga versus McNeese. Uh, I've talked about McNeese weeks ago on the pod as one of my sleeper teams to make the tournament. Shahada Wells is phenomenal. Christian Schumann is a phenomenal big man. He's only 6'6", but he's very good. I'm picking McNeese to win this game. I can't switch up on him now. I think Gonzaga's good, but McNeese is a very good defensive team, and they're also a very good offensive team. I think they're going to win it. Samford, a very, very good offensive team as well versus Kansas, which we saw. They lose McCullers to an injury. Hunter Dickinson is also a little hurt. I hope Hunter Dickinson's uh, college career ends here against Samford, and I predict it will. Uh, South Carolina, Oregon, I've been going back and forth. I'm going to pick Oregon to win. They're kind of on a heater. They looked very good in the Pac-12 tournament. I think they're going to be able to upset South Carolina. Creighton Akron, Creighton is just very good. Uh, they have three players averaging over 17 points per game. They're tough to slow down. Texas versus the winner of Colorado State, Virginia. I'm going to pick Texas. I wanted to pick the winner of Colorado State, Virginia, but I think Max Acemas is primed for another big March performance. And then Tennessee, St. Peter's. 
I don't think the Peacocks get it done here. I got Tennessee. Purdue versus TCU, I have Purdue winning. Um, McNeese versus Samford. Uh, again, I have McNeese winning. They're one of my favorite teams in all of college. They have a very good defense. I think they'll be able to slow down Samford, and their offense is elite as well. Oregon versus Creighton. I have Creighton winning. Like I said, they have three guys averaging 17 points per game. The, they lost their point guard. Why am I blanking on his name? Nemhard. They lost him to Gonzaga. I would love to see a... I don't want... I predicted Gonzaga losing the first round, but a Gonzaga versus Creighton Elite Eight game would be very interesting for that uh, storyline. And then Texas versus Tennessee. I have Tennessee moving on to the Elite Eight. So I have Purdue, McNeese, Creighton, Tennessee as well. All right. Moving on here to the Elite Eight... Or sorry, the Sweet 16 for the... Wait, hold on, I'm lost now. Okay, yeah, Sweet 16 for the East... UConn, UConn and Auburn, I'm taking UConn. These teams are actually very similar. They both shoot it well. They both defend well. They're both average rebounding, except for UConn is just slightly better at everything that Auburn does. I think I think they'll be able to stop Auburn enough defensively and score enough points, especially in the paint, uh, to win that game against Auburn. Then Illinois, Illinois versus Iowa State. Um, as great as Illinois is, on offense, Iowa State is almost better on defense. This is going to be a completely stylistic uh, fight or game here and styles make fights. So I'm going to go with Iowa state and the defensive prowess to beat Illinois. Uh, like I said before, Iowa state, I think is one of the best five or six teams in this tournament. I think they beat Illinois here. That sets up for UConn and Iowa state in the elite eight. And as much as I do love Iowa state, like I said, I'm going to go with UConn. It's hard to bet against a team that just won last year, has a great coach in Dan Hurley who's experienced and knows how to win tournament games and also just doesn't really have any holes in their team. One hole I will say about Iowa State is they're not the best free throw shooting team. They shoot 70% from the line. That's always really concerning to me in March when it comes down to it. These kids got to make their free throws. I don't think Iowa State's going to be. I'm going to take UConn, but I think this has the potential to be one of, if not the best games in the tournament if it happens. All right, for my Sweet 16 in the East, I have, like you mentioned, Josh, UConn, they're just, they're just one of the best teams in the entire tournament. I have them over San Diego State, and I actually went Illinois over Iowa State. Maybe it's just because I'm a little biased for Iowa DeSumo and his alma mater. So I'm going Illinois over Iowa State, and then, unfortunately, Illinois' run is going to come to an end. I have UConn beating uh, Illinois in the Elite Eight. So they're, they're just too good of a team to pick against, especially in this situation. But any given game... Maybe we see some crazy stuff happen. Yeah, UConn, Auburn. I think this is going to be one of the best games of the tournament if it happens. Auburn is on fire right now. They just won the SEC tournament and dominated most of their games. And UConn just won the Big East tournament. I actually picked Auburn to win this one. I just switched it right before we um, started recording. I think Auburn is just on fire. I think it's going to continue. Sometimes there's teams that are just destined to win games like this. Bruce Pearl has done it before where... These teams just get hot and march and win a lot. So I have UConn upsetting the number one seed. We saw Alabama get upset last year. And then Illinois versus Drake. I have Illinois winning. I think Terrence Shannon is going to have a big game. Coleman Hawkins as well. Uh, I think they're too big for Drake. So I have Auburn versus Illinois to go to the final four. And I have Auburn continuing their hot streak. I'm not the biggest Auburn fan or Bruce Pearl, but he has been pretty good in March. Uh, when he has a good teams, and this is one of the better teams he's had, especially three point shooting wise. So I think they get it done, and they're the winners of the East region. All right, moving on here to what is this? The West. Okay, the West. North Carolina, St. Mary's. This is where I have my first number one seed going down. I got St. Mary's beating North Carolina, going on to the Elite Eight. So, or North Carolina is a great offensive team, and they shoot the ball pretty well. St. Mary's and them are about equal when it comes to three-point shooting. But North Carolina hasn't had to play a defensive team like St. Mary's all year. They don't play many teams that are going to slow you down and just grind out games. St. Mary's opponent points per game is 58.7 this year. I believe that's the best in the tournament or one of the best. Um, I think they're going to be able to slow North Carolina down and get the win, move on to the Elite Eight. Uh, like I said, I think this is their best team they've had in the short little run they've had here. Uh, and then Baylor, Arizona. I don't trust Baylor. I love Arizona. This is a pretty easy pick for Arizona for me. Uh, Baylor does shoot the ball pretty well. They're one of the better three-point shooting teams in the tournament. But at the end of the day, I trust Caleb Love as one of the best players in this tournament to be the alpha for that team and get them to the Elite Eight and the Final Four because I have them beating St. Mary's in the next round. St. Mary's run comes to an end there. At the end of the day, um, 
what I forgot to mention in the North Carolina St. Mary's game, like I just said with the free throw shooting, St. Mary's does shoot an abysmal 68% from the line. I'm going to say that catches up to them here. It could catch up to them early, but I'm going to say it catches up to them here. Arizona is just a better shooting team. Uh, they do give up a lot of points per game, so that opens the door for St. Mary's. If they can put up some points in this game, they can win it, but I think Arizona wins this one in a close one and moves on to the final four, putting them with UConn on that side of the bracket. So in my Sweet 16, I had Alabama against Mississippi State. I'm going with Alabama here. Uh, they're one of the best offenses in the nation. And, I mean, defense. Who needs defense? Am I right? Uh, and then I have Arizona over New Mexico. And that sets up a battle of the A logos in the Elite Eight between Alabama and Arizona. I went Alabama. Uh, like I said, who needs defense? Uh, I think Alabama's offense is just going to carry them. It's going to have to carry them in this tournament. So I have them advancing to the Final Four to face UConn. Yeah, I have North Carolina versus Grand Canyon, uh, and I have Grand Canyon's little Cinderella run coming to an end. I think North Carolina would beat them. Uh, R.J. Davis, Armando Baycott, uh, two big time players, make a win a big game. New Mexico versus Arizona. I have Arizona beating New Mexico and ending their little run, which sets up a North Carolina Arizona Elite Eight, which is something I think the NCAA would love. The Caleb Love revenge game versus North Carolina. The R.J. Davis versus Caleb Love little. Saga and I have Arizona beating North Carolina to go to the final four. Uh, they're a streaky team. They can get very hot. Uh, they're also very good on defense. I think they win, go to the final four and get to play a final four in their home state. Yes, it is in Phoenix this year. Uh, moving on to the South Houston and JMU is where JMU's run is going to end for me. Uh, Houston, I think, is one of the top three teams in the tournament. Uh, like I said, they just rough you up. They're the best offensive team in the tournament by far. And JMU, who is an elite offensive team, and they are solid on defense as well. I think they're just going to run into something they haven't seen before. Uh, maybe see a little deer in headlights situation. I think Houston runs them out of the gym probably. But what a run for JMU if they did get that far. And Kentucky and Marquette, this is going to be the first really, really tough matchup for Kentucky. Uh, Marquette does defend uh, pretty well. Uh, not bad, not Houston well, but they their opponents average 69.7 points a game, so they're pretty solid defensively. Uh, Marquette is average offensively. They're not going to go and light you up at any point. But Kentucky is just so dominant on offense, and it just comes down to guards, guards, guards. Like you have Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard, Antonio Reeves, if you want to count him as a guard. And that's not even including DJ Wagner, who was one of the top players in the class. Justin Edwards, who's more of a forward now, but was a guard slash forward going into college. You just got too many guys that can go get you 30 if you need it. And that's not even exaggerating. It is 30 if you need it. And they shoot 77% from the line. So I think that gets them to the Elite Eight to play Houston. And this is a really tough matchup overall for Kentucky. I am definitely scared of this matchup when I saw it come out on the bracket. Houston was probably my favorite going into this tournament. Um, but I'm I cannot not go with the Cats, man. There's just something about when this team gets hot, and yeah, they have their cold spots. They definitely do. They can go out there and throw up a stinker and lose by 30 to Houston. That is very possible. But they do the things that you need to win in this tournament. They shoot threes, they're 41% from the line. They're a good free throw shooting, they're 77%. And I value having guards over anything. It's going to be a very, very tough game. It's Houston averages 57 points given up per game. And Kentucky, let me see the exact number here, averages 89.7 points a game. So it's going to, does Kentucky score 70 and lose this game or do they score 90 and win? That's the question. I'm going to go with the Cats. I believe in Cal. I believe in the guards. And I just like, I just like Dillingham and Reed Shepard over Cryer and Sheet at this point. So I'm going with Kentucky. I also have the same Elite Eight matchup as you. I have Houston over Wisconsin and then Kentucky over Florida in my Sweet 16. And then, like you said, I'm honestly petrified if we end up having to face Houston. I'm going to probably look at this as glass half empty, unfortunately. I got Houston beating us. It's it's an unfortunate pick, but it's going to be hard to ask someone to go out and get 30 against one of the best teams in the entire uh, country. Houston is just really good. Uh, it's... It's unfortunate, but I'll let you stick to to being really optimistic. I'm gonna unfortunately play the other side. I'm going of the coin. to. <laughs> hey, that's fine. It, one of I'm us has to. to. <laughs> I'm glad it's you. I'm going Houston though. Yeah, Houston, James Madison. I also have Houston winning, and then Kentucky Marquette, which I think will be a very good game. A uh, battle of a couple good guards, uh, but I have Kentucky winning that as well, and also setting up Kentucky versus Houston. 
I think this is another game that I think is going to be like uh, with UConn and uh, Auburn as one of the best games in the tournament, Houston versus Kentucky. If there's a team that can handle the pressure that Houston's guards put on you defensively, it will be Kentucky with uh, Rob Dillingham and them. But I have Houston winning. Uh, I love their defense. Their team is very good. They are going to be very motivated after getting blown out in the Big 12 championship. Uh, they were phenomenal all season. I don't see that changing now. They went 30 and four. Uh, the only really thing that concerns me about Houston is if uh, the refs get very foul happy because they are very aggressive defensively. That's why they're one of the, if not the best defensive team in the country. If the refs uh, get very happy on their whistle, that could hurt them and definitely benefit Kentucky in this game. But I just, I think they're too good. They're too experienced. They have a lot of seniors. I think Houston wins this game and goes to the final four. All right, moving on to the Midwest region, Purdue and McNeese. I am tempted to go McNeese here. Me I too, really man. am. Me too. I'm really tempted. I'm going to go with Purdue. I think they break the double-digit seed thing. They're shooting 40% from three. It's the best three-point percentage in my recent memory of Purdue. Smith and Lawyer are great guards. It's going to come down to Lawyer, though. When he plays well and he's shooting the three well, Purdue is nearly unbeatable. When he's not shooting it well, they are very beatable. Uh, McNeese shoots 69% from the line, Purdue 72, and neither are too great from the line overall. Um, but I'm going to go with Purdue here. I just think Zach Eady is just going to be too much for McNeese, especially a small team in McNeese. Uh, 7 1 versus, or sorry, 7 4 versus 6 6 is just tough. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, almost giving up a foot down there. But so I'm going to go with Purdue. Creighton in Tennessee. I'm going to stick with the big guys. I'm going with Creighton. I love Colkburner. I think he's a great player. Um, they shoot the ball wetter, wetter, well, wetter, I guess, too, from the line than, than Tennessee, I guess, that plays. Um, but these two teams are pretty equal. They both defend average. They both shoot average. Tennessee is better on the boards. I think the key for Creighton is just going to be able to get on the glass in this game, and I think Colt will be able to do that against Tennessee. Creighton's going to have to play physical. Tennessee plays really physical, but I think Tennessee falls short once again, leading to Purdue and Creighton in the Elite Eight. And this is where I cut off Purdue. I'm going with Creighton to go to the Final Four. I think you match up well with two giant big men in the paint. Purdue's not going to be able to abuse ED like they can against other teams. Uh, Creighton's physical. They're going to be able to play physical enough with Purdue. At the end of the day, Creighton just needs to run Purdue off the three-point line and not let ED get easy touches in the paint, and I think they can win this game. Creighton, I think, has been one of the more underrated teams all year. They lost early in the Big East uh, tournament, but... We saw a lot of great teams lose early in their tournaments this year. I'm going with Creighton to beat Purdue, setting up a matchup with Kentucky in the Final Four, and my Final Four would then be UConn, Arizona, Kentucky, and Creighton. So for my Midwest uh, Sweet 16, picking these games, it was kind of rough because obviously the ones that I want to pick, I don't want to pick, if that makes sense. I'm picking Purdue over Kansas. Uh, I'm kind of a Zach Eady hater, so – I mean, it, it kind of sucks to have to pick that, but the Kansas injury is very large, and I think that really catches up to them at this point. And then I have Tennessee over Creighton. It's it's just something I don't want to do, but I have to. That sets up a nightmare Elite Eight matchup for me. Uh, Purdue and Tennessee, you know I just can't give one of our boys the satisfaction of reaching the Final Four. I, I'll take my Zach ED hate, and I'll, I'll swallow that one a little bit, and I'll give Purdue the berth to the Final Four. And I don't know. It's I hate that matchup so much for my own safety. But so that leaves my final four as UConn, Alabama, Houston, and Purdue. Three one seeds. So you can tell I don't know very much ball. <laughs> no, that's hey, those that are happens. three very good teams. Dickie V bracket. <laughs> <laughs> uh well who who had who had the four one seeds in the men and women's chain and sharp yeah, <laughs> sharp yeah, yeah all four yeah. one seeds yeah. in the men's and all four one seeds in the women i love it uh, he funny. never claimed to be a college hoops guy <laughs> no uh but purdue versus mcneese uh very interesting matchup mcneese doesn't match up well against purdue their center mainly is six foot six they don't really play many guys i don't think they play anyone over six foot six which when you're going up against a guy seven foot foot four and you're giving up almost a whole foot, that's not good. But we saw last year with FDU, they were a very short team. They were able to spread the floor on Zach Eady, kind of take him out of the game defensively. They didn't really drive. They were able to shoot the ball well. So is McNeese. I can see McNeese in this position beating Purdue and continuing the uh, gauntlet of losses for Purdue. I'd love to see that. I love this McNeese team. But I think this Purdue team, I just don't see Matt Painter doing it again. I don't see this Purdue team doing it again and losing four years in a row in years you're very good to a double-digit seed. 
I think they get it done. It kind of hurts me to pick because I love this McNeese team. Uh, but Zach Eady versus six foot four. You have to give the ball every time down the court, and he should be able to score every time with his little elbow to the opponent's head and try to give them a concussion. Uh, Creighton versus Tennessee, another tough matchup to pick. Uh, Tennessee is kind of slow. They were hot going into the end of the season. They've kind of slowed down with losses to Kentucky and Mississippi State. Dalton Connect is very good. I like this Creighton team, though. Uh, Baylor Shireman, Trey Alexander have been very good. Kalk Brenner's phenomenal. I think they're able to get it done and set up Purdue versus Creighton, which I'm going back and forth on. Um, going into the final four is, is, does Matt Painter finally do it? Is he finally able to get to the final four? No, actually, no. Yes. You know what? Purdue finally does it. They get to the final four. Maybe the refs give them this game against Creighton and, uh, sets up with a Purdue, Houston, Auburn, Arizona final four. All right. So I'll do my final four national champion. I'm going to go with UConn to beat Arizona. Um, they are better on offense and defense than Arizona. Caleb Love can definitely go light it up and go crazy for them. Uh, and I think he's going to have a phenomenal tournament, but I think they do fall to UConn here. Uh, the way that Arizona can win this game, though, is just getting on the glass. They're a great rebounding team. Balo has been fantastic for them for a few years now. Um, I think Arizona is one of the better teams in this tournament, even though they've had some questionable losses this year. Uh, and they are at home, like we said, but I'm going to go with UConn to beat Arizona. Creighton and Kentucky. Uh, man, this is, it's tough. Cause I'm as, I mean, obviously I'm a Kentucky fan, but I am, I, this Creighton team has been a team that I've wanted to, uh, pick to go far in this bracket. Um, every team's going to be better defending than Kentucky that they play. And no team that Kentucky plays is going to be able to score like them unless they're playing against Alabama. They're not playing against Alabama. I think at the end of the day, Creighton is going to learn that playing in a conference that only gets three bids is not like playing in a conference that gets eight. I'm going to take Kentucky to beat Creighton. Do it. Get hot. (laughs) I think at this point, the way I'm valuing Kentucky, they're just such a hot and cold team. If they get here, that means they're shooting the hell out of the ball. That means they beat Houston. And unless they go ice cold out of nowhere, I think they're going to remain hot. And in doing that, I have them revenging 2014, beating UConn in the national championship. They're a better three-point shooting team. They're a better free-throw shooting team. Obviously, UConn's better defensively. Like I said, that doesn't matter at this point. Every team is better defensively than Kentucky. Um, UConn, I do think, is probably the second or third best team in this tournament. They're able to defend. They're able to rebound. Kentucky's biggest weaknesses are not against the teams that are great defending. They're against the teams that are great rebounding. UConn is pretty average overall rebounding and I don't know. I just don't see it happening on the 10 year anniversary of losing to UConn in the national championship. I think it's only right that they avenge themselves and win number nine, adding another patch on the jacket. (laughs) I'm going to kind of use your logic towards another team in Alabama. I think they beat UConn in my final four. Their offense is going to have to carry them throughout the entire tournament. Terrible on defense, but who needs that? So I got Bama over UConn, and then I think Houston takes out Purdue. I think they're just a better team as a whole, and I think they match up way better against a really tall guy. And I think the just the surrounding guys uh, around Edie aren't good enough to keep up with what Houston's got going on. So my national championship is going to be Alabama against Houston. This is where I think, unfortunately, Alabama's offense kind of runs dry and their lack of defense catches up with them. I think Houston takes uh, takes down Alabama for their uh, for the national championship. And did we say the total number of points for the tiebreaker? Or are we not focusing on that? Uh, I, I I didn't do that, but if it's Kentucky, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say ninety three eighty eight. So whatever the number is on that one eighty one, I think ninety three. So for Bama and Houston, I have the tiebreaker is one hundred seventy two total points. I don't know what the final score would be, but I don't know, maybe. 100 to 72 just because Bama can't play defense so I got I got Houston winning my uh my champion as my champion I have my final four uh first matchup Auburn versus Arizona a battle of the A's here like you had earlier Zach I'm gonna go with Arizona I think this Auburn team's hot us uh, Arizona if they make it this far like the logic you guys said I think they're going to be hot I think Caleb Love's going to be playing very good the final four is in Phoenix in your home state it's basically a home game. There's going to be a lot of Zona fans there. I think Arizona wins and goes to the championship. And then Houston versus Purdue. Uh, I just trust this Houston team more. I think 
their defense is going to swallow up the guards. They need a massive game from Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer to win this game. I don't think that's going to happen. I have Houston beating Purdue and probably a close game and maybe my national championship, really, because in the final Arizona-Houston, I have Houston winning. I think the defense would be able to slow down Caleb Love, although he is phenomenal. And the Arizona fans go home sad. Uh, Houston winning the championship. Kelvin Sampson finally getting a championship first year in the Big 12 for them. They get it done with their very experienced team. I have them. I have a final score tiebreaker of 78 to 70. So if you add up the numbers, it's 78 plus 70. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that about does it here. I just wanted to add that um, had Houston been on the other side of the bracket from Kentucky, that would have been my national championship. I just really, really love this Houston team. Uh, but I can't let whatever you want to call it bias, I guess, <laughs> get in the way of it. But at the end of the day, I just think this Kentucky team has a chance to be insane offensively. But well, they are already, but in this tournament. Um, but that about does it here for our March Madness preview episode. We'll be back next week, uh, probably around the same time, to talk about the first weekend of the NCAA tournament, uh, which one C lost in the first couple of weeks, which the third Bonk. days, which, yeah, which uh, which 13 seed made it to the Sweet 16. But uh, we will be back to recap that next week. We may or may not add the NFC North and AFC North preview to that. It depends on how much stuff we have to talk about with March Madness or how we want to approach that recap, but that might be in there as well. Uh, until then, you can hit all the links in our description, TikTok, Spotify, all of our socials will be down there, and we'll see everybody in the next one.